So welcome today. My first talk is from Liang Xiao on slopes of modular form, ghost conjecture of Bergdahl and Pollack. As usual, we ask you please refrain to ask questions during the talk, but if you need to, please use the chat so not to interrupt. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for the introduction and also the invitation to this interesting online, uh, like I guess, conference. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to, I guess, talk about this. This is something that I really like about so, the slopes of module forms and ghost conjecture. Yeah. I really enjoy it. See working. you tomorrow. Oh, good? Okay. So, so okay, this is a joint work with Rochuan Liu, Na Chuan, uh, and Bin Zhao. Uh, so I will first of all explain the, this question of slopes. And, uh, sorry, just one sec. Okay. Okay, so, so everyone hear me fine. Okay, good. Now I know that. I, my voice is okay. Okay, so so okay. So let's first of all explain what this question about slopes is, and then, and then you know. Uh, so let's fix the prime p greater than equal to five. Uh, let's normalize the p adic evaluation so that the p evaluation of p is one. And if I have a normalized uh, cuspidal uh, eigenform f, written as so of weight k greater than equal to two and the level. Uh, oh, sorry. I should say that the level here. I, I deliberately have it to be divisible by p exactly once. So this is sort of some sort of small trick when we talk about, you know, when people, p adds people think about module forms, we deliberately want it to have a level at p. Even if it doesn't have, we somehow we, we insert one there. Okay, then, then we have a up operator. This is a little bit different from the usual tp operator uh, where p does not divide the level. So if up operator, I want my f to be an eigenform for the up operator. So even if I have a start with a model form F with level N, you know, without P, I think of it as a level at NP and then I'll try to use this form to make up two UP eigenforms. In any case, I have an eigenform UP, F equals APF, and the slope module form is the periodic evaluation of its uh, UP eigenvalue. We know that this is always a, is, is somewhere between zero and K minus one. So the very basic question, somewhat naive, I guess, is that what are the slopes of module forms? What kind of number we do we actually get? Uh, so this is so let's try to make it more, I guess, maybe <laughs> feels more profound. So let's fix a absolute irreducible odd representation, rho bar, as so. Uh, I want to consider, I guess, not just all module forms, but only those module forms live in this sort of subs. Uh, so this S K. Uh, gamma 1 pn is for the level gamma 1 pn with some Niven helps character chi. That's a space of module form, but I want to look at sort of the space localized at this row bar. And similarly, uh, there's for periodic reasons we can sort of deform these classical forms into so called overcovered module forms. See, so I localize it at M row bar. The, the hack ideal de determined by this row bar. Then I can define, talk about the characteristic power series of this UP action on this space. So both space carry UP actions. And I can talk about the, just like, looks like character polynomial, except my T is together with the operator, but not on the other side. And then I can take sort of determinant of this. This, this makes, oh, sorry, this belongs to, when I take determinant of this, uh, I guess, I think maybe belongs to here. Uh, ZP bar is sort of algebra closure, uh, sort of the, uh, the ring of energy in the algebra closure of QP. And then with power series in T. Uh, and it go, looks like sort of one plus something C1 T plus C2 T squared and so on and so forth. And uh, here's a better question. What are the slopes in the Newton polygon of this character power series with invariable T? So, so basically you draw these uh, periodic, uh, starting with here, you draw the periodic evaluation of these C, Cns earlier and then draw the convex half of these. And the actual slope in this sort of drawing is the slopes of these module forms and count with multiple C. Uh, the whole point of sort of why it's called better question is because we don't talk about slopes of any module forms, but we talk about slope module forms when I localize a space at a, at a hack ideal associated to a residual gamma representation row bar. Why is that the better question? Because we have the other side that we can talk about. Uh, namely, there's a gamma representation side that, that we can also see the same question in the sense that for each representation f, excuse me, for each eigenform f, 
in this it's eigenspace localized at m row bar, I have a Galois representation at row f associated to it. And this will lift the residual Galois representation row bar. And also there's uh, additional properties of like, you know, coefficients of this f, uh, sorry, al. So if, if l does not, for example, if l does not divide pn, and then al will be the trace of fervience of rho f, and those sort of standard conditions you have seen many times. Uh, but in particular, I want to just say one condition at p. So I want to write rho f comma p to be the local Galois representation. And this, because of the level I chose as so, this row f is semi stabilin at p. And one of the eigenvalue of this Christmas for b is acting on the square d pst of this representation is precisely my ap. So, in other words, earlier we talked about slope module forms f. Slope module form, oh, I realized I can use this. I forgot, I forgot that. Uh, earlier I've been talking about slope module forms that can be turned into on the Galois side slopes of this Frobenius eigenvalues. In fact, another way to think of this is that somehow this row f or is sort of local Galois representation determines a point on the Kisson deformation space. Uh, you, you deform your row bar to, uh, I guess, a heart, uh, uh, sorry, a Chris Abelian representation uh, with heart rate weight zero and k minus one and some sort of a character chi. And this will give you a point in the generic fiber of this. The reason I put quotation marks is because uh, my row bar p may not be irreducible. So this may not be a, a kind of a, a actual deformation ring. Uh, in fact, what we should be doing is that somehow I should be doing a sort of a frame deformation and I will get some sort of orbit of this. But that's sort of a minor technique I want to sort of gloss over. But you can just pretend that we have a point on this. Now we can ask a question on from the Galois side. So what are the slopes of this Frobenius? I mean, over this, I mean, over this deformation space, I have a universal Galois representation, which is crystal billing. And I can talk about DPSC of that, which carries an action of the Frobenius. And then we can ask, what are the slopes of the phi on this, you know, on this sort of fat, this universal uh, decrease of this representation? Of course, you can see that by my description here, these two questions are really sort of the same question in the sense that the slopes of multiform f is really the slopes of this phi here. So now uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna sort of talk about, so what we can say about these slopes on, on both sides, I guess, in some sense. So for this, let's fix a coefficient. Uh, let's see, so E is a finite extension of QP and rate of integer O and bar pi is uniformizer and F is a residue field. Actually, I won't need much of these probably. I, I'm gonna write this, my, my Niemann type is character chi is the tame part and the part at P. So here's a theorem in progress. Uh, so we have a draft, so very unpolished draft, but I think it's, <laughs> I, I hope somehow we, I, I hope we have all most ingredients there. Uh, so, uh, so, one, so we look at the case where this row bar restricted initial group uh, is uh, reducible and not split. And I want my parameter A here to be in between four and P minus seven. We really hope as some, like in later, I mean, we have, when we have enough time, we hope to get to one and P minus four, but if you want, if we want to go beyond this, it seems to be going to be very, very difficult. So, in other words, I guess one thing we should we should keep in mind is somehow basically A is well between zero and P, somewhere in the middle. Very somehow is this some sort of generic condition in some sense? Very maybe make sure very generic. And this would in particular imply that there's only one stair weight. Oh, I forgot to say at the beginning. This is a conference on stair weights. So here, here we go, stair weight. And uh, I want to assume that, of course, global row bar is absolutely reducible. And I want to assume, uh, here's a sort of minor condition, so that's why it's a bit lighter. I want to assume that here's a multiple to one condition, but somehow it's something that's two-dimensional. I want to talk about the sort of weight, uh, weight two module form of level gamma one MP. I write chi tame. Let me probably, this is a bad notation in the sense that I want to say that for the tame level, I want, for the tame part, I want a tame level. But at P, I, I really, I want gamma one P level. So I don't know how to write this. 
So maybe it's sort of, maybe it's better to direct sum of all the chi p's of gamma two. Excuse me. What I mean by this is I want this. Maybe this is a better way. Chi time, and all chi p. This is two dimensional. So that's what I mean. And in fact, this is sort of minimum possible. This will kind of a. Uh, uh, I guess this is minimum possible in the sense of when you have only one share weight. So this is always sort of an even number. Then, our, then, the, then the, the result is that somehow the slopes in this Newton polygon of this, of this capture power series on the sort of classical form side is of course uh, the same as what you see as a phi slope on this sort of DPST of this universal deformation uh, so universal representation over the universal deformation range. So you see the same set of slopes. And uh, but this, the first part is not surprising, but, uh, uh, but what's maybe interesting is that we have a, there's a way to, to give an explicit set of what this should be, uh, re relatively easier to calculate and it's computatorially defined. And what's more is that this only depends on the prime P, the A, which is this A here, and the weight k and chi p. It will not depend on global row bar. It will effort, in fact, it will not depend on that we're talking about module forms. You can talk about U2 Schumacher varieties and whatever. It will be sort of the same thing. As long as it's locally, it looks like GL to QP. That's the only condition. And also, of course, this have this, this, this sort of shape of row bar. This will kind of be clear when, when we set it up later, things later. Okay, so here's a couple of remarks of the history of this. So when p equals two and n equals one, uh, I think this was this 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 sort of combinatorial recipe was first uh, first it appeared in this work in this, in this paper by Buzzard and Caligari, where they uh, of course in this particular case p equals two and n equals one they they made a conjecture really uh, uh, of what the slopes should be, and they also talk about sort of the overconvergent ones. And they actually proved the case when k equals zero. Wait, wait, of course, what, what, what I mean by this is that somehow they proved the slopes for overconvergent forms when k equals zero. I guess for their method, they can probably improve it to uh, some other ways for smaller ways by hand. But it, I don't know how to do them in general, I guess. Uh, so this was later generalized by other people say, uh, like Lisa Clay, David Loeffler to various other cases, this sort of conjecture. Uh, a serious sort of conjecture formulation. And what's, I guess, most important, so our, our work is really relies on is both uh, and Pollock's uh, reformulation of this conjecture, which somehow makes us, uh, I guess, gives the meaning of this combinatorial recipe, I guess. And so also they numerically verify this conjecture extensively so that I guess we really believe that this must be a correct, <laughs> this must be a correct thing. So here's, uh, uh, maybe I should also mention that there's also analogous story. Earlier we talked about somehow the level is exactly divided by P once. There's also analogous story for module forms with high P power conductor. And this is related to something called, uh, I guess called spectral halo. Uh, uh, right. Uh, this was, uh, there, there are similar stories. Uh, looks somehow statements in a very <laughs> vague form looks sort of similar, the slopes of these uh, so the module forms the same as slopes of deformations, and then this is some explicit set you can find it. So this was first of all conjectured by uh, Coleman Mazur and Buzzer and Kilford. Uh, I guess Coleman Mazur in their sort of famous Eigenkurve paper, paper, they ask you know what was sort of the behavior of the Eigenkurve near the boundary, and Buzzer and Kilford did this example for p equals two and n equals one, and uh, later I guess Col uh, based on the idea of Coleman and he have uh, sorry and he have, Andriata, Iovita, and Piloni uh, give a framework using attic spaces to talk about this question of special halo. And in my joint work with Ruotran Liu and uh, Da Qing Wan, uh, we, we proved the definite quaternion case. And our, method, our proof was ge later generalized by Johansson and Newton to the, well, uh, I think still a definite case, but with one split prime about P, about that. And this was, I guess, I guess, relatively recently, I guess, uh, Ru Fei Ren and Bin Zhao, uh, they did it for the all Hilbert case when P space completely. So, so these are all about sort of special halo, what's happening, I guess, when these module forms have high P power conductor. But what we talk about today, 
uh, will be the case where I guess this is we're mostly concerned with the case where uh, the the, con the conductor is just divided by p basically. And uh, for the people who know, we, we sort of can talk about maybe so, so there's sort of a weight disk here, and there's a radius of one over. So okay, so I'm just saying a spectral halo concerns somehow the boundary of this weight disk, and the ghost somehow is sort of concerns in the center. And in fact, somehow the ghost will actually dictate what's happening on the boundary as well. That's what we'll, we'll explain it just a little bit maybe. So, uh, right, so let's talk a little bit about the corollary of what we can deduce from this and why we're somehow, very, I guess why I'm very excited about this. Uh, this, this kind of try to prove this condition, I guess. Uh, so so the, one of the things that will follow from this is, uh, is you can take sort of a roll bar version of so-called Gouvier Mather conjecture on the local constancy of slopes. And uh, so basically it, it's a question of on this Eigen curve, how, how big a radius you can get where the slopes keeps being constant. So I will not say too much about this. Uh, there's also a robot version of the so-called Gouvet's conjecture on the distribution of slopes. So this is kind of interesting. Maybe I'll say a little bit about it. Uh, so we, we talk about the slopes of, of, of these model forms. Uh, these slopes always live inside zero and k minus one. Okay, so I can normalize it so that this whole thing becomes now in zero and one. And of course, depending on, uh, right. Uh, so of course, there are, there, there are multiple slopes here. So I can give it, I think it's called density measure for each of the sort of, each of the numbers in zero and one given by the slopes. And then that gets sort of a measure uh, on zero and one and then takes a limit. And the uh, Gouvet conjecture at this limit will be the following. I have some sort of delta measure at one half so this measure goes as so. At one half, it's a delta measure. This is this has weight uh, p minus one over p plus one. So this comes from the those forms which are which are Steinberg at p. So that's this is this is this is easy to know to see, and also easy to see that the, uh, this this measure will end up being symmetric with respect to one half. So what's not so clear is that why is somehow equally distributed between zero and one over p plus one and the p over p plus one and one. And also basically there's nothing in between. So, uh, oh sorry, there's nothing here. And there's nothing here. And why, why somehow this sort of exactly cut off at one over p plus one. So that's some sort of mystery of this, of this conjecture. But this will follow from the commentar recipe. Uh, but also, I want to say that I guess Gouvier conjectured for all row bar, all row bar, of course, but we only kind of can, at this moment, can understand the row bars we, under our strong hypothesis that row bar is uh, reducible, non-split, and generic. Okay, there's also a row bar version of refined halo conjecture, meaning that, so, so the, the, on the boundary, the slopes, the slopes will be exhibit, exactly given by some particular numbers, as opposed to sort of given in a certain range or arithmetic progression or whatever. This is somehow, it will follow from the ghost conjecture that the boundary slope will be uniquely determined by some sort of easy recipe. And I guess maybe what's interesting is that somehow this, I think if I'm not mistaken, that this will show that each irreducible component of the Christobelian deformation space will have uh, we'll have Bohemian multiplicity one uh, with conductor on the boundary with conductor greater equal to p square. We'll have Bohemian multiplicity one. So, in the sense that somehow the generic fiber will be just a bunch of balls, they're apart from each other. Basically, it's because they have different slopes. So, they have to be, and each and basically each irreducible component will have different slopes. So, there are exactly that many sort of slopes and then that many components. Again, under this assumption under our assumption on the row bar. I also want to make a remark that this is part one and one to three, they were known, they were known to, to be correlates of ghost conjecture by, Bergdahl, by the work of Bergdahl and Pollock. Further correlates, Gouet has an interesting uh, conjecture called, I think, I don't know what it's called, I think it's called K minus one over P plus one conjecture. <laughs> uh, 
It says that if you take any crystal, oh, sorry. If you take any crystal lift of this row bar of weight K, this will have a, a one of the Fermi slope uh, to be less than or equal to K minus one over P plus one floor. Uh, it was proved by uh, Beje Li Zhu that uh, this is something like this. Maybe I, I may be wrong with the, with the, with the, with the sort of the, the, maybe just this, or maybe, you know, uh, maybe a floor or a ceiling. I know I'm not so sure. And, and recently, uh, I, by Brendan Levine and, uh, broke the, sorry. My bad. Read it better. That they, they improve it to K or P. Uh, I'm not so sure about this floor or ceiling as well. Uh, but somehow, if one, I guess the ghost conjecture will imply that this is actually the precise bound as conjectured by Gouvet. Another folklore conjecture, uh, another quality of this is a folklore conjecture by uh, Buzzer, uh, Buzzer and Emerton. What they, what they conjecture was that all crystal lifts of this row bar of weight K must have forbidden slopes in Z or half of Z. Namely, there might be a sort of a half integer happening, but no more denominators. And this half integer happen, happens only precisely when uh, A is odd. So this, uh, this, when you restrict to IP here, uh, this is sort of omega H plus one trivial star multiplicity. So this A is odd. And uh, I think, uh, and under the, at this moment, under the multiplicity one condition, we can show that no other locus of the special curve over each weight disk is irreducible. So this was conjectured by, I guess, Coleman and Mazur, uh, asking whether the, I guess, eigen curve has finite many irreducible components. And I guess this sort of at least provides some evidence for this. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're not quite sure how to deal with the case when there's multiple is not one yet. Uh, we haven't sort of thought too much into this yet, I guess. Okay, Brandon says, sir, Brandon said this, this was, uh, their, their work over here is a uh, floor. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, so uh, so now we're gonna reformulate our conjecture completely locally. So that's somehow the first task, the first first step of the proof. So I want to define uh, this is a terrible notation. I don't know a good name for it. I call it completely homology piece because it's going to be a piece of the complete homology. Sorry for that name. Uh, this is associated to a stair weight, uh, the stair weight given by the row bar. And I want to take my H tilde to be the projective envelope of this stair weight for the Yuasawai al algebra for the GL2 ZP. Uh, uh, and uh, I want to, so this of course carries an action of GL2 ZP. I want to think about the right action for some reason uh, to, to make our life, my life a little bit easier. I want to extend this GL2 ZP action arbitrarily to a uh, GL2 QP mod uh, action. And I can always trace the center action. So I want to assume that the diagonal P to act trivially. So whenever I have such sort of data, I can define a, some sort of abstract uh, sort of modular form. I just sort of hum this space to the uh, sim K minus two of, of sort of O's direction twice. And I want to call this sort of unramified uh, sort of space of forms, abstract forms. And I can do Iwahori invariance. I call it sort of the, the form with gamma zero P level and their dimensions are given by these. And uh, so where does this sort of H2 to come from? So if I have some sort of, I, if I had the mod, mod P multiplicity, uh, excuse me, mod P multiplicity one hypothesis as earlier, then I can take, uh, this is a module curve. And I can take sort of any, some sort of time level. And I want to take inverse limit of the, uh, the level at P to infinity or so to down to one, I guess. And I take the etal, ho excuse me, etal homology of this. And then I take the inverse limit. Uh, of course, I, I, before that I take the localization that's row bar. And uh, there will be two, I mean, because we, we take etal homology, there will be sort of a, a Galois representation 
I take, I guess, half of this. I cut it half. I don't want like a lot of representation. I only want sort of hack part of this. It takes where the complex conjugation acts by one. Or I can take negative one if I want to, but it doesn't really matter. So if I do so, uh, when I, then if I do this sort of hum of this H tutor to the symmetry power, this will, or, 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 or so I don't know if I, or you are hurry, as so, this will be equal to the usual etal uh, homology of the curve with value, oh, sorry, this is a typo, sim k minus two o square here, okay? Sorry, let me rewrite this. So this is, should be this local system, the corresponding local system on the, on the, on the, on the, on the module curve and this ETA homology. We know that it have the same hack spectrum as the module form. So, so really, instead of working with module forms, somehow this, what we're doing here is actually working with a Betty or ETA realization of the module forms. So, so the, I, I guess one of the reasons uh, that the small module forms are not easy to deal with is because the integral structure is very uh, subtle, but somehow for the ETA system, is, the integral structure is much better understood. So more generally, we can guess H tilde using uh, so-called patched completely uh, homology. Uh, so this is sort of the duo of the six author paper. Uh, so this is something we patched to get this H tilde infinity. So this is a patching variable we have over here. So this, this is some sort of module over, over this O, O this dummy variables here. And uh, if I, so for every dummy number, sorry, a dummy variable, I can associate it with a, with a value. Then I can, you know, tensor this with, a, with the values or evaluate this, this, this big module at this value. I get some sort of H2 to H, H, H2 to infinity Z0. This is my H2. So any of the, any of the sort of dummy value Z0 will give me an instance of this complete homology piece we have, we work here. And, uh, and this thing on the other side, this lifts over the, 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 the big deformation, local deformation space. And if I apply uh, this HOM, I would get to some sort of, uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, it's some, some sort of module, which will have full support over the Kissing deformation space. And of course, if I, on the other side, specialize the dummy variables, I will precisely get to these spaces here. Our theorem later on will be, will tell me the slopes of these, each of these things, regardless of what Z0 will be. And therefore, we will know the slopes over here because this thing has full support over, full support over here. Uh, by local global compatibility, we'll know the crystalline slopes over here, entirely determined by the calculation over here. For, of course, but then of course we have to, we, uh, in the sense that we, uh, we uh, in, in the sense that, in the sense that my H tilde will, will no longer have any sort of automorphic input, will be just sort of abstract setting as so. So that's the price we pay. But the benefit is that we, at the end of the day, we get all the information about crystal deformation space. So here's a remark, I, actually something I don't quite know. Maybe there's a way to work with a Pascunas function and there's, a, there's something we can, uh, that, that takes sort of the projected envelope of this, of some sort of, uh, uh, a row, uh, uh, sort of pi, uh, take, takes project envelope of sort of pi rho bar in some sense uh, as a GL two QP representation, and then quotient by some something, a, a kind of a uniformizer or something. This this could be one of the my H two. Maybe that would work. I don't. I haven't thought about it carefully. So that's sort of another interpretation of this, or maybe another perspective of this. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's talk about at least the statement of the so-called local ghost conjecture, which is sort of analog of uh, the question of slopes from a purely local point of view. So I want to set uh, delta to be uh, Z mod P cross. I mean, in, in this in the statement, somehow I guess these 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 characters character on these is very annoying. You have to keep track of these. So I want to uh, uh, write this omega as the Teichmann lift, as the Kisman Teichmann character, and I want to fix a, uh, a character of delta square, and I take it to be the form of omega to the s epsilon is some number, 
S epsilon is somewhere between, uh, it's a number between zero and P minus, uh, excuse me, P minus two. Okay. Uh, it would depend on what epsilon is, I guess. And the reason these two characters multiply to omega to the A is because uh, my zero weight is sim a, a of FP square and therefore the central character is omega A, something like this. And uh, your thought algebra is isomorphic to ZPW and my W is, is the generator I take to be the one plus P minus one, the standard one. Um, and, and as before, I want to start with the H Chirita, a complete homology piece as before. Uh, uh, I define the so-called periodic modules or sort of abstract periodic forms because in my HTML is no longer automorphic, sort of purely abstract things. So I'm going to call it sort of abstract periodic forms to be home of this, of this thing into the in continuous induced representation, the unique character on BZP. So this is sort of the same thing as what you would do for, I guess, sort of periodic model forms on definite quaternions. Same thing. And this thing has a nicely, I mean, the, the reason I want my h choice is because uh, the h choice is a projected envelope of something over the USO algebra. And this is, you can show this is actually free of rank two over the USO algebra of pro P over Hori. Because I mean, this h choice is sort of projective over this one. And this is a non commuter local rank. So it must be free over here. And the rank is two coming from um, a simple calculation of the project envelope. So therefore, if I take home over Iwahori P, this will be essentially sort of the same thing what you have, what, whatever you have on the right-hand side with some sort of central, with some condition on this, I mean, somehow this delta square comes in as this quotient of Iwahori P over this. Basically, so A bar and B, D bar, basically. And, and, and somehow this, this, this induced representation is isomorphic to, it's just basically uh, ZP of O, this. Continue the function in O, the, the sort of this power series. And so this is a very explicit thing. Basically, I mean, this, this, this PI's form is basically just two copies of this. But you have to, we have to keep track of this sort of central character action. It's a little bit of uh, sort of this character of this sort of diagonal sort of small torus action. This is a bit of annoying. And in fact, I guess somehow on the other, on the other hand, all the common torus really do come from these, these actions. Okay, I, I want to take you. So this, this, thing, this space carries an action of UP. And the UP action is O uh, is W linear. And therefore, I can take the character power series of this UP action on the space. Then I get the you know, like a power series. And with coefficients in O double bracket W. And uh, to relate to the, my earlier question about the slopes of module forms, I point out that if I have this sort of universal uh, so character power series, I evaluate at this W, which corresponds and uh, Niban Tabas character uh, chi p, I will recover uh, the uh, sort of uh, the overcome module forms. Oh, I forgot to say one thing earlier is that uh, I'm, I'm being a little bit sloppy here uh, that uh, uh, this UP action on this space is not, I mean, technically it's not compact. So we have to adjust the, adjust sort of a, uh, I guess sort of, sort of Rate of convergence of these space of continuous functions. I'm not going to get into these details here, but uh, but at the end of the day, the uh, this power series do have coefficients in here. It does have, I mean, this power series does have coefficients in here, and uh, I mean, this is morally correct, I guess. We'll see later, I guess, how to sort of change this basis a little bit. Here's, here's some maybe actually sorry, this theorem in progress. Which is that uh, th there's a uh, there's a there's a really combinatorially defined so-called ghost series uh, uh, why it's called ghost series uh, uh, the, the name name it was uh, this name comes from I guess Brockton Pollock's paper and we'll see in a bit 
So this is, uh, uh, so basically the point is that I want to approximate these CIs. I mean, these things that you can't really compute explicitly. So we want to find some sort of toy model for the, what these CIs could be. And, uh, and the, the toy model is taken so that when you evaluate your power series at any w dot the w in the in, I guess what, when the norm is less than on, on, on the way disk, the, the two power series will not be equal, of course, but they will have the same Newton polygon. And therefore, when, if you want to understand the soft model forms, it's not to just look at this combinatorial defined thing and look at what kind of slope you will get. So let's make it explicit. This each of the coefficients, in fact, a polynomial is a product of, of some sort of, uh, just product of some sort of simple fact, uh, some sort of factors. It will have zero as precisely WK, whereas WK is this number. This is the point corresponding to weight K. But of course, for, for each K, uh, there's a multiplicity. I mean, for most of them, you're gonna see zero. So those are not zeros. But there are for some which are, which are not zero. It's a following. So this is zero, unless uh, n is the nth coefficient in the power series. This n is in between uh, these dimensions what we had earlier. Uh, maybe just go back a little bit. So these dimensions of this sort of IRMFI form and gamma naught level forms. If your n exactly sits between the IRMFI form and uh, uh, this sort of gamma p, uh, gamma p uh, level form, the dimension of the gamma p level form minus the unrelated forms. If you're in between these two numbers, it's not zero. And it's a minimum of this n minus this. And uh, so whatever is in between, I guess, so whatever is smaller for, 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 for the n to the bound, to, to boundaries. So, so, uh, so Brooklyn and Pollock call this go series because I guess they use computer uh, to calculate so many examples and, and to verify their conjecture and then they see these patterns. But unfortunately, they don't, I mean, they, they don't know why somehow such pattern would show up in some sense. So they call it ghost because I guess come from nowhere. So, so we will see next in a few pages, uh, I guess in, probably in a, in a few pages, I guess explanation of why such thing shows up. And also another thing I should be just to be uh, just to be correct that somehow this these dimensions earlier I write I wrote uh, this should be sort of ga gamma naught p levels and identify form. In fact, I when I said that I should have some sort of central character twist by something related to this epsilon. Oh, sorry, s epsilon is. But this is okay if s if s epsilon is zero. So namely, I have one cross omega a. That's precisely somehow this can. So this formulation is precisely correct. But so if epsilon is other epsilon, you have to change the definition of these a little bit. I will not get into that. It's too complicated. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the proof. So first suppose I should talk about S epsilon equals zero, and therefore my character is one cross omega a. Uh, there are two ingredients of the proof. The first is so-called p-stabilization. Uh, so if you have a form which is unramified, you can realize it as a gamma naught p form in two ways. In the sense that you have a, in the classic, you know, let's, let me write it in the classic model form case. You can either send it to just itself or send it to fp, right? And sort of going backwards, you, can, you have sort of two projections. You basically average over the coset of, I guess, sort of GL2 over ZP of your whole AP. Or you average over the other one. Oh, shoot, I didn't prepare. So, uh, let's see, which is which? I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, my bad. So, uh, Right. Okay. So you, you can also average over the coset of this and, and, and then somehow get to the form over here. Okay. Or maybe I should conjugate on the other side. Anyways, 
so, so you have exactly, two, you know what I mean. So you have exactly two averages you get back here. And also on this space of uh, sort of a gamma p, gamma zero p forms, there's, there's a, some analog of the atkin laner involution on this one. So these are the sort of standard operators you see in such a sort of setup. Uh, so here's a key. Uh, over here, oh, I, I should say, uh, over here, this thing, uh, uh, remember this is, uh, this is space is the harm of H2 eta of symmetric power of K minus two O of your Hori P, right? And this thing, as I said, this is the almost free over your Hori. It's, it's free over the pro P your Hori group. So this is roughly speaking, this is sort of basically two copies of, of this with some, some, some sort of specific character on this one. With another, a different character on this one. Oh, sorry, I know, I know what the characters are. So this is what it is. What, uh, excuse me. So this is what, what, the, what, what, what this space looks like. And of course, there's a, uh, if you write this as, uh, I guess, polynomials with degree less than equal to k minus two, there's, there, there are power bases. And this ethical linear, given as so, it has a very nice form with respect to this power basis. It's just an anti-diagonal matrix. As, uh, so you can see that probably, you see a little bit of a shade here. So it's anti-diagonal. And what the key of this, our proof is a simple equality. You can, I guess one can really prove this very easily. Uh, is that UP is equal to, you can check very easily, is minus, uh, is minus action linear plus you first embedded this sort of uh, ironified form, ironified form into gamma naught P invariant form uh, one way and project it back the other way. So you just have a simple relation like so. And using this, we can deduce a very non-trivial result somehow. If you, if you, now if you think about the case, so okay, so recall that my, my, my character power series uh, is sort of one plus C one W T to the N. So let's evaluate my this as K, okay? I wanna look at C N W N T to the K. So this thing, this thing is almost, I mean, like if you do an P analysis, it's almost, or at least somehow the main term is the, the, the I guess it's the, the determinant of, of upper left, so, so upper left n by n minor. So I'm looking at sort of determinant of this thing. But I wanna put myself in a situation where n is between DKI ramified and DKI Wahori minus DKI ramified. So therefore, I have, I, have my, I have my form in here. And basically my CN is roughly the, the determinant, of, determinant of this block here. But now my UP operator is a, well, let me just maybe, maybe, maybe assume that my N is less than half of this as the picture I draw here. So therefore, Therefore, my, my, my upper left n by n block will not touch whatever, is, whatever I write here for at the linear part. We only consist of this part here. But this part, we know that the dimension of this is large compared to the dimension of this one. So therefore, this one, this matrix here, although it will spread out in this big box, but it will have very low rank. So therefore, this determinant will be zero because, I mean, the rank, will only be maybe in the first several, several rows in some sense. So therefore this will be, the determinant will be zero. And if you do it a little bit more using sort of, look at sort of W minus WK, you will see that the determinant of the upper left N by N uh, minor will have zero of multiplicity, exactly the, mul the, the ghost multiplicity at W equals WK. Oh, maybe I should uh, ask a question. So what, uh, the talk goes to uh, 15 minutes or one hour? 15 minutes, but you can take a few extra since you got a break. In okay. The middle. Okay. Let's see. 
uh, another key ingredient I want to say is that uh, there's a so when we took, when we did this uh, special halo uh, uh, result, we use, we use it's very important to use Mahler ex Mahler basis uh, as uh, to make to make make this a little bit work a little bit better. We have to normalize it. so we have to do p and p square and also so, and uh, we have to sort of same estimate. The matrix p p and m for this u p on this Mahler basis, so it's in contrast of the power basis we had earlier. We satisfy this nice bound here. This looks exactly like the uh, I'm sorry, the proof is actually the same as the halo thing, except we uh, there's very technical thing that if the p -adic expansion of the m and n is in a very strange shape. There's a little bit of an error term. We, we can improve it just a tiny bit. Somehow this will help just a tiny bit. And uh, another sort of technical thing I, maybe I should mention is that when we talk about these spaces, there's always somehow some space delta equals one cross omega to the a. And this delta action will act on this z by z to j to some sort of alpha to the j z to the j for some alpha bar in f, f uh, maybe in, in the mu, in mu, mu p minus one. Okay, so therefore, uh, but the model basis is behave very badly with respect to this kind of action. It will not send the basis to another basis or up to a scalar. So instead we, we can modify another modified model basis we can take is that somehow essentially taking the leading term of these Mahler bases. You, if we write the NSP expansion as so, I write Z to the first N zeros power, and then the Z to the P minus Z over P to the N one power, and iterate this expression to the N to the power and so on and so forth. The benefit of doing so is that all the powers exponents on Z are congruent modulo P minus one. So, so therefore this kind of action will, will, not, will, will send the basis to a basis. So let me take another couple of minutes. So let's talk a little bit about the main ingredients. So the key common horror input is so-called ghost duality, we call it. Uh, this was communicated to us uh, by uh, guys, Bergdahl and Pollock. Uh, they, they did a lot of computation and somehow they kind of realized that this, there's some sort of interesting common horror phenomenon about this ghost series. So this, uh, this is a little bit technical. So if my take my L to be in between half uh, to, to be in between basically negative of this thing and positive this thing, then I can define the take the p, take I want to take the p the p elevation of the ghost series evaluate w k, but this is a, where this ghost series has a zero as this w k, so I instead I take sort of the leading coefficient by removing all these sort of factors of the form w minus w k, so I take the p elevation of that, and I re and I normalize it by minus L times K minus over two. Then the surprising thing is that somehow this Delta prime is symmetric if you replace L by minus L. Uh, uh, so this is somehow, uh, I guess, in some sense this, this relates to the somehow when you have M, N of K. When n is between these, uh, when n is between, I guess k, um, where we find, and k and dk Iwahori. If you somehow draw this, this range, this is this is dk unified. This is this part, and this m and k looks like some sort of cascading shape. Uh, so, so, go up and down. So these two are kind of related in some sense. And this is also sort of symmetric in some sense. And another technical thing is that we have to take the convex hull of this. Uh, the reason we introduce this is somehow using this, this, this value, we can describe precisely when the Newton polygon of this ghost series is not a vertex. Uh, somehow the main result says that it's not a vertex. That's because your W, your, your point on the weight disk is too close to a Steinberg weight. And how close? It's too close in the sense that it's close enough to be greater than or equal to the sort of difference of the two consecutive deltas. In the, so, so that's basically, in, in the sense that if you look at sort of the weight disk, if you want to look at sort of the, the vertex, uh, the nth vertex, 
And uh, for those which are where this is not a vertex, they will be concentrated in some small disks. And there are somehow larger, a little bit larger disk. The radius usually is something like p to the mi minus a. And the next disk has a radius p to the negative a, I think minus p one over half. Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. It's uh, minus a p minus one minus a. And then the next one is something like p to the minus a minus p minus one, I think. Maybe it was p minus two, sorry, I forgot. So you have two disks of this kind of a form. Uh, uh, sorry, wrong. So this, this is a disk of p to the minus p minus one minus a. And this is a disk of that size. And there's a similar size here. And you have sort of smaller, smaller size disks like so. So those are the disks. Those are the disks where this n is not a vertex. And the size of these, uh, uh, this, this new department will be a vertex. Uh, so maybe I'll kind of skip the, the last part in the sense that somehow the, the, the way to actually make it work is that I have this character power series and I do a Lagrange interpolation with respect to the Gauss series and see how these two are different. And then we reduce the proof to bounding the coefficient of these sort of the remainder terms of the Lagrangian interpolation using these deltas. And there's also subtlety that we have to do a delta minus delta prime. It's a bit annoying. And then we do a run induction on n. For, I mean, this is for all the cn. So it's a sum of all n by n prime, uh, so principal minors. So that's a sum of all. So I, I do this run this for all the n by n principal minors. But when I do induction, I have to do it for all n by n minors. This is somehow a very, a scary thing to do, but somehow this turns out to be the correct one thing to do. Uh, right. So for, to do this, we, we, we use this earlier equality of this sort of UP equals AL plus sort of this, some sort of projection to circ I1, and then, then break up UP as AL part and the other part, and then run induction. I, I, so that's basically, roughly what's happening, but there are lots of sort of technical things to here. Sorry for running over time, and thank you for coming to my talk. And also sorry for the interrupt, sort of misconnection in the middle. Okay. Let us thank uh, Liang Gin, and if you have any questions, please raise your hand using the reaction button. Um, Any questions? Uh, I, I have a question. Yeah, is it okay, Elena? Yeah, yeah please. Good. Uh, so the um, space in which you took the characteristic power series of the UP operator was after you localized at the M of rho bar, right? Yes. So is there a priori reason to believe that uh, this characteristic power series would be independent of rho bar? Um, of course, it follows from the, the relation to this ghost power uh, series, but can, can you explain it, at least heuristically a priori? Uh, but the, the slopes does not. Sorry? No, no, no. The, the character power series depends on depends on the global setup and the row bar. No, I mean the, the slopes. slopes. Sorry, I meant I meant only the slopes, of course. Not the oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Right, 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 right. So, so I guess this you can see on the Galois side because, in the sense that, we have this kiss and deformation space, and there's a sort of universal thing here, and the phi would act on it by something. If you believe this uh, conjecture by, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, buzzard, uh, buzzard, uh, Emerton, these slopes mm -hmm. should be integers. So they will kind of jump discreetly. And, and these slopes should precisely be the slopes you see here. And I guess uh -huh. somehow this should not depend on any sort of the global data. Mm, I see. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah I, but I, it's, I, it's not a proof, but it's, it, it seems to be this should be the. No, this makes sense. And actually, I had another small question. 
you, you mentioned this uh, limit measure of, of Gouvea that supported yeah. sort of on, on, on two, except for the middle uh, point on, on two sides. How did he come up with it via computations or did he? he computer. Did he have computer. any heuristics? No, no, he came up, came up with a, a computer computation. But I'm not too sure. I mean, like, there, there, there is actually some sort of, uh, you can show some sort of lower bound of this. Uh, you can show some sort of lower bound of this Newton polygon, which would suggest, which, which looks like some sort of, code, I mean, somehow if you're equally distributed around here, there will be kind of a quadratic growth. And all of a sudden, it's sort of a huge slope, which is sort of a slope of this. And mm -hmm. then some sort of quadratic. You can show, it's not that hard to show a lower bound like so. But it's uh -huh. difficult to show that, you know, your actual, your actual slope will be very much close to the actual, uh, to, to the lower bound. So that's a different, that's a more difficult thing to do. I see. Yeah, so, so I, yeah, at some point, I think we, it was not that difficult to see a lower bound. I see. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Yeah. There is another, question. Question. yeah, there is one more question from Richard. You can go ahead. Uh, in, in your main theorem, your multiplicity one assumption, as I understood yeah. it, is um, much more restrictive than the usual one, in that you're saying that the localization is two dimensional, not mod m rho bar is two dimensional. Is that right? Uh, I guess what I mean is that somehow, uh, maybe in the patched case, uh, there's a multiplicity one. In the uh, where are, uh, what are trying to say? So, but yeah. it's the, the localization is one dimensional, not the is is what you're requiring. Uh, what I'm what I'm requiring is that if, if you do this sort of the six author paper, uh, when it when it construct this uh, you know GL two QP, uh, mm. sort of this a candidate of sort of this local non correspondence, they they require some sort of multiplicity one. It's the same multiplicity one there. So I, I don't know what multiplicity one they require. But oh, if, if, sorry. There were, if there were two forms of this level that were congruent, then this that, that's not a lot. This would fail in that case. Uh, that's not a lot. This is not uh, so. So so in fact, so so our plan is following. Uh, the uh, we're gonna do it in a U two Schumer variety mm -hmm. instead of in the module form case, where we do have this multiplicity one. Namely, given, given the row bar, as long as we do it in one situation, then we can, that's already enough to deduce things over here. And then we can even, we can do more. We can do all the sort of, uh, maybe sort of, in some sense, sort of uh, over covered, oh, excuse me, one minute. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, triangulating deformation space, right? We can get all the slopes for triangulating deformation space. Now we, in general, set up, we can bootstrap this, Galois information back to the to 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 to, to general setup, and then prove it for the general situation. So that was the plan. We haven't done that part yet. So, so I'm still I'm still confused. If there are two forms, two different forms that are congruent to your M rho bar, do you have mm -hmm. a theorem or not? Not yet. Not yet. But but you hope, and yeah. But you hope. Well, we'll, yeah, you'd hope you'd get the same theorem? Hmm? And the statement would be the same if you did get a theorem. Same would, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Statement would be this, uh, the, in, a, in the same, the slope will be precisely given by the set. And then if you take Newton polygon of the, of the, uh, of the thing without the multiplicity one, it will be the slope of the ghost series stretched out by whatever the multiplicity is. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, then let us thank Liang again and we can stop the recording.